Some of you may remember a show we produced several months ago with a very talented musician who just so happened to be transgender. His story was simple. Having been born female, he often felt like he should be living his life as a male. Not knowing have, or having a name for what he was feeling, he often struggled with trying to meet the expectations of family and friends on a daily basis. Take a look at this clip. All right. Hi, and welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here. Please welcome Ryan Casada to the show. Thank you, Ryan, so much for being here today, for sharing your story. Now, you do have a very unique story. I, I read about you in Pulse Magazine, which is where we actually found you. And you not only traveled the world promoting equality for all, but you also speak about transgender issues because you're transgender yourself. Tell me, how long ago did you figure that out about yourself? I realized I was transgender when I met a transgender person when I was about 14 years old. I didn't know that being transgender existed. I had no clue you could change your gender. So when I met this person, it was like a light bulb went off. And I always felt different my entire life. I just never could put a name to what I was feeling. So it was hard to express what I was feeling to my parents, to my friends. Right. Now, how Well, Ryan is back today, and he has so much more to share with all of you, including the release of his brand new album, The Rhythm. You don't want to miss it. More fun is coming your way, and guest updates with Ryan Casada. Stay with us. Hello and welcome back to the show. Today my guest is former guest Ryan Casada, who appeared on our show several months ago. If you don't remember, Ryan is a singer, songwriter, and transgender activist who travels the country giving motivational speeches on equality for all. He also writes his own music and performs it as well around the country, which we'll get to a little bit later, including the release of his new album, The Rhythm. Ryan, welcome back to the show. How's everything going? Great. Everything's been going well. Great. So what's new since you last left the show? I have been playing a lot of festivals in the summertime, and I released a new record. Nice, and that's The Rhythm, which yes. we're going to get to in a little while. So you've been busy. You're ex um, also going to be preparing to go to school at the end of the month. You're going to be attending San Francisco University. San Francisco State University. Wow, good for you. And what's going to be your major there? Political science. Nice. So what made you go with the, po uh, the political science route as opposed to doing your music, which is something I know you love to do? I'm still going to continue to do my music in San Francisco. I even have a show booked for the day after I get there. So nice. everything will keep going with that. I chose to do political science because I want to continue being an activist. And I feel that the most effective way right now is to get into politics and take over some of the, the bad things that are happening and turn them into good things. All right, good for you. Good for you. And I know we didn't really get to touch too much on this the last time you were here, but giving your motivational speeches around the country as you do, what are some of the topics that you like to cover or, or what's important to you personally? The most important topics that I cover are just what does transgender mean? What does it mean to be transgender? And I also like to cover bullying because that's a really big problem mm -hmm. in high schools and even some colleges. So I like to always cover the bullying part of it. And I recently just gave the keynote speech at the Philadelphia Trans Health Conference. And that speech was geared towards inner community hate and that the entire trans community has to come together as one before we expect the rest of society to come together with us. Interesting. Good for you. Good for you. Excellent. So. Um, talking about your speeches and, and bullying, were you bullied growing up when you were trying to figure out you were transgender? Because just if people don't remember at home, you actually came out as a lesbian years ago, not knowing that you might be transgender or not having a name for it. Is that something that really touches your heart? Were you bullied growing up and going through those stages? Yeah. Um, since late elementary school to the end of high school, I was bullied. and. That, so that is definitely something that resonates with inside me mm -hmm. and makes me want to be an activist 
to stop bullying. Good. Good for you. So tell me, um, now that you, you've gone through top surgery also, you did that early this year. Now we touched on that a little bit on the last show that you were on. How's the healing process going for you? Yeah, right now I am seven months post-operation, and I'm feeling great. I've never felt more free in my entire life, and I just feel more comfortable with myself, and I just feel like me now. Good. Good for you. Yeah, thank you. No, oh, you're very welcome. And I thank you for coming here and sharing your story because I know it's such an important topic and there's still bullying going on out there. And these are some of the things that you talk about in your speeches. So just going um, back to the touring that you do throughout the country, where are some of the places that you've been to give these motivational speeches? This year I focused a lot on the East Coast and I did a New Jersey tour which included some New York and upstate New York as well. Mm -hmm. And I got to give a, some assemblies to entire schools, which was great because I reached that many thousand people at once. Right. And that's, that's what I've been doing. The biggest thing I've done this year was the Philadelphia Trans Health Conference and giving that, that was a big one. speech. Wow. Excellent. And you've also uh, performed at the San Francisco Pride, right? And you've also done the Long Island Pride. Mm -hmm. And that's where you perform some of the music. Did you also give speeches there as well? At San Francisco Pride, I had the opportunity to give a speech. Nice. And what was the topic that you chose? Um, the same thing, just that the community, the entire lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community needs to come together and stop hating on one another and then work on the rest of the it's world. True. It, it's really sad out there and there's actually been more cases in recent news too about bullying and, and teens taking their lives for you know their gay, lesbian, bisexual genders. Um, I'd like to touch a little bit more on your music now. You have a brand new album that's just released this month called The Rhythm. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, I released The Rhythm at the end of May and on iTunes I released it in June and it took about a year to complete it. Wow. We started pre-production in July of 2011 and we worked on it in the studio and of course I had my surgery in January so that was a little bit of a setback. Yeah, so I that set you back a little bit. Perform, but it took about a year and we got it out and you know, it's it's been doing really well and it's definitely doing a lot better than the other two albums that I've released. Good, excellent. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So now you write all of your own music, just for the record. You write it, you produce it, and, and you make the, the music and the lyrics that go with it. What are some of the things that inspired you to do that? I mean, do you write your music based off of personal experiences? Yeah, all of my songs are based on things that have happened to me in my life or things that are affecting me. Like, I write a lot of songs about bullying because a lot of teenagers come up to me and say, I'm being bullied and this is how I feel about it. And of course they feel very badly about it. And it affects me because I've been there too. So right. I, I like to write songs about that. And I like to write songs that give people hope and inspire people to change the world. And what's different about this album as opposed to your last album that you released? Yeah, the last album I released, The Theme of Humankind, that album I recorded with a band, and we pretty much recorded the entire album live, and wow. we did it in more of an old school way. We recorded it to tape, which is cool. Mm -hmm. um, this album, we were a little bit more critical on it, and it's definitely edited a lot better, and it's, it's very tight. Uh, I had some studio musicians come in and play along Oh, uh, which was great, but mm -hmm. it was a multi-track record, and it was it was a lot of fun to do. Excellent. Yeah. What inspired you to get involved with music? Yeah, when I was about six years old, my brother was sort of playing guitar, uh -huh. and I just I just wanted to play, and I I asked my parents, you know, can I play? Can I play? And of course, I was I was way too small to pick up the guitar. <laughs> considering how huge they are. <laughs> yeah, so my parents uh, got me a teacher and the guitar teacher made like a really small guitar for me and I started playing and I fell in love with it. 
That's and awesome. And yeah, he actually so left a really, athlete. he left a real imprint on your life, too. You were very much attached to your guitar teacher, right? He was yeah. somebody who was special I for you. Two, two, I had two guitar teachers growing up, and yeah, one of them did pass away, but definitely um, inspired me and changed my life for the better. In what ways? Like, what was, what was it about him? Like, how did you connect with him that he opened this musical talent up for you? Yeah, my guitar teacher, Lou, he told me that I had a talent and he said, is music going to be your hobby or your passion? And as a sixth grader, I wasn't able to answer that question. And a couple years later, I was able to see, you know, music is my passion and this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Good. And it's interesting, you know, because you're going to be going to school for political science, so it, it does kind of like shock me a little bit that you don't want to major in some kind of music production, but you're still going to continue your music, as you said, and you're actually working on a new acoustic album now. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, I went back to the studio this summer, and I recorded, I think, 26 songs. Wow. And I recorded them all live, so they're raw and sounds really cool. The recording engineer was great mm -hmm. and really fit my style, so that was a bonus. And I should be able to make two or three albums from that. Nice. While at least during my first year of college, so more things will be coming out, a lot of new songs, and a couple old songs that I wanted to remake and mm -hmm. Excellent. make them acoustic. Good, good for you. You got a lot of good stuff going on. What yeah. do you think is the biggest audience that you performed for? I think this summer I performed to a lot of big audiences. Um, starting at schools, I, I performed to entire schools at once, so it's a couple thousand people. And at the Rhode Island Pride Festival, that was a very uh, close-knit community and everyone mm -hmm. was really into the, the music of it. And I probably performed to about 5,000 people oh, wow. that were actually listening. And um, at San, Fris Fr San, Fr San Francisco Pride, I performed to quite a bit of people, but that Pride's more about the partying and less about the, the Pride and the music, so. So where do you see yourself, say, in like 10 years from now? I mean, do you want to pursue politics and keep maybe music as like a side thing, or would you rather pursue your music and just keep the political science in the back of your mind? Like, where, where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? Yeah, um, I'm not really sure. I'm just letting the wind take me. I'm really happy with everything I'm doing now, and my whole thing is, my main like gig is give a speech and then play a concert afterwards, or play a concert and explain my songs and just tell my stories and be able to educate people that way. So either way, I just I want to educate people. So I, I feel that I could do that through speaking and music and the two of them combined is just really makes it something that nobody else is doing. Right. Good, good for you. I actually bumped into you over the summer at the Long Island Pride in Huntington this past year. You were performing some of your music there. Um, you kind of had not such a good experience later on in the day though. Yeah. Do you want to talk about it? Sure. Um, after I performed, of course, uh, when I was performing, I was introduced as a transgender singer-songwriter from Long Island. Right. And as I was bringing my instruments to my car, um, three people that were clearly there celebrating Pride came up to me and said really mean things Ugh. that you shouldn't say to a transgender person. Mm. And it was just really terrible to see that happening at Pride and it was something that I didn't expect at all no. because I felt that going into Pride I felt like I was in a safe place you would think, and then yeah. after that I was like you know the community is so torn apart but in a sense I'm glad that that happened to me because it really opened my mind to see that there is so much hate within just within the gay lesbian bisexual and transgender community and it's impossible to expect other people outside of the community to accept us before we are, before we are coming together as one with each other. So, yeah. so now one of my goals is to speak out on that and raise awareness about that and try to get the community to love each other.
So is that going to be a topic, perhaps, or, or maybe worked into one of your speeches when you go on tour? Definitely. But there's still, I mean, it, it's, it is kind of mind-blowing because you would think, like you said, you're in a safe place. These are people that are there to celebrate pride. They're part of the gay, lesbian, bisexual community themselves. I mean, what was your response to them when they said these awful things to you? I, I think I said something along the lines of, you know, are, are you even in the community or something like that? Mm. Um, you know, we're supposed to be a community. I said something like that, and, you know, I, I, whenever someone verbally attacks me, somehow I, I, I manage to keep cool, and I just say, like, something that, that could be hurtful, but is, like, the truth. Like, you know, we're supposed to be a community, and maybe they'll think about it. Um, at one of my speeches, I had this, like, uh, this guy stand up and start, yelling things about the Bible and <laughs> really crazy. Wow. And um, all the kids were just like, oh, my God, what is happening? And I just, like, turned it into something that was funny so that they, yeah, they wouldn't be Yeah, make a joke afraid, out of it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Lighten the mood yeah. a little bit. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you have to do that instead of, you know. Now, did this happen before or after your performance? This happened afterwards. Oh, okay, so it's yeah. not like you went in there and you had this on your mind and you still had to perform songs and all. No, thank God. <laughs> I mean, I mean, did you inform anybody at the the park where the Pride Parade was held to let uh, them know what was I happening? I didn't that day, but actually a week or two ago, I ran into one of the people that were running Pride, and I was able to tell him the experience that I had and. He really like listened and yeah. understood what was happening. And so. this experience wasn't anything new to you. I mean, you've been through things like this in the past, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. Does it, does it make you a stronger person, you think? Definitely. I think everything that pulls you down brings you up a little bit more. Good. And your family is perfectly okay with the lifestyle that you need, live now. I mean, you're, yeah. you know, born female, transitioned to male. I mean, I understand your dad did have a little trouble with it in the beginning, but everything is okay with him now? Yeah, my entire family is extremely supportive, and I'm very thankful for it. Good. And another major accomplishment you had in high school was you fought to get your new legal name, which is Ryan Casada, into the yearbook. Yeah. Tell us about that process. Remi I'm, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we talked a little bit about the last time you were here, but just to remind people at home of what that story was, because that is a major accomplishment. I mean, this was something that was important to you. I know you got a petition going. You tell the story, though. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, during, I think, my t when I was in 10th grade, my name was about to be legally changed, and in just like four weeks, it was going to be legally changed, and the school yearbook was coming out at the end of the year, and it was nearing the end of the year, and I was already going through the process of changing my name, which is a very long process. It's not something that happens overnight or happens in a week. It so it's not like somebody months. who gets married and then they change their last name yeah. to their husband's name. This was a lot more involved. Yeah, okay. so there's a lot of court stuff with it, mm -hmm. uh, just to be safe. Um, so my school was aware that my name was changing. The beginning of the school year, my yearbook co uh, coordinator sends me an email and says, don't worry the entire year. I will definitely put your name in the yearbook as Ryan, regardless of its, if as if it's legally changed or not, it doesn't matter. So at the end of the year, I asked him, you know, are you going to put my name in the yearbook as Ryan? And he told me no. And I got all raged up, and I was like, I have to do something about this. I'm not going to let myself be humiliated to mm -hmm. my entire school. Right. This is ridiculous. And I had a petition going, and all the students were on my side. And I made a petition online, which got thousands of people across Long Island. Awesome. Good and for you. I met with my principal, my superintendent, and everyone, and I told my school that if they put my name in the yearbook as anything but Ryan, that gives the entire student body an open opportunity to pick on me and belittle me. And that's the school allowing the students to do that. And my principal really understood, and right. he put my name in the yearbook as Ryan. Good. Congratulations yeah. for Thank that. You. Big round of applause for that. I mean, that's actually a real amazing accomplishment for somebody very young. You're only, what, 18 years old? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, good for you. You have some, some amazing stuff coming your way. And more amazing stuff is coming up next. We're going to take a break here. and we come back, Ryan's going to perform some of his brand new songs off his new album, The Rhythm. Stay here. We'll be right back.
tuned in. Well, where have you been? Today we are back with former guest Ryan Casada, and he is a singer, songwriter, and transgender activist who travels the country giving motivational speeches and performing his music that he writes all on his own. He's now going to perform some songs for you that is released off his brand new album, The Rhythm. Ryan, take it away. Thank you. <laughs> Homesick, iron dry, or the super sparks of air. Whatever it is, what's the use? Can you name a better fix? Been on the run three months or so, and I'm booking book. I go and go and go, living a disco to Frisco with the beats and the tea flow. Does my fatigue show? Let me tell you. Show on regular radio, my life. 